What I have here in this shadow box are the artifacts of a trip. You'll find brochures and of course maps and travel guides, some cards and money and all the stuff you'd find exploring a city. And it's made to look as if it had just been pulled out of my pockets. But of course, there's a lot of work and planning that goes into the look of this. That look, of course, being that this wasn't overly planned out, which is completely wrong. Everything here is symbolic. It represents something to me. These items are linked in certain ways. Example, this half bottle of rum, though not being the full bottle I was carrying, the big bottle, I had to leave behind on the dock because you can't take that from old Havana to Casablanca on the ferry. A couple of days later, we're at a baseball game back in Havana and uh, we're talking with a gentleman and I tell him that we spent some time in the fabled, mythical Casablanca. And he says, Casablanca, you say? It was, it was really, really sunny that day. Not a booger, just my nose in a weird light. Consult your doctor. And I think he was smoking a pipe. Casablanca, you say? Yeah. That 1940s movie with Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. Yeah. With the Nazis. Oh. The Casablanca in Morocco. Oh. I'm stupid sometimes. And that's okay, as long as you can laugh about it. There's a lot represented in here. Yet, there's not a single picture of me or taken by me, just the artifacts. For pictures, I create photo books from my digital files. This is the one created for this trip. Let me show you. Personally, I use Apple's photo app, which has the option of creating cards and calendars and stunning books. And if you're a geocacher like me, take note that you can't bring a GPS into Cuba, but your phone's geocaching app will work and there's a cache right here at the base of the Primavera. Now let's take a look at how this thing is built. This frame is IKEA's 10 inch by 10 inch riba. I bought several of these a couple of years ago, but they're out of stock now. I believe they've been replaced by frames named Sonahead, though they're 9 and 3 quarter inches square and also out of stock. Basically, you can use it as a regular photo frame. But, of course, we need the entire depth of this thing. And this is what gives it depth. So we're gonna go like a this. The one I have here, I'm using a map of the area I was staying in. And then I've got all these accessories. Let's take a look. You open these tabs, fold them back, remove the back cover, or We'll just remove top first. Well, the bottle will include itself, but that's okay. The way this is set up, the items are cut really, really tight against the inside of the frame. Some of the items are underneath the frame, some are over. It's a 3D type of effect using, of course, stuff like foam core, hot glue. Speaking of hot glue, you have to be really careful because some papers Thermal papers, I would think, react very badly to the heat of the glue. So let's say, in this case here, the invitation to a party, the original is right here underneath. I don't know if you can see it, because it had turned black. So I photoshopped a new copy, printed it on a thicker cardboard, on thicker paper, and I kept the original underneath as an artifact. I'll put this aside and get to work on a new one. I'm going to do a running commentary over these images while also doing an impromptu travel blog type of thing and you just pretend that I'm doing this live. My box of stuff I put aside from this trip. Twice these past two years I've worked on the aesthetics of the box. I prefer the layout from the right picture but I prefer the bottle of Jameson to be on the right side of the box 
simply to alternate with the Havana box. I've got brochures from all over Ireland, Kilkenny, Belfast. As a backdrop, I've chosen a map with some points of interest highlighted. One of my favorite cities, Dublin or Dublin, depending which side of the Liffey you're from. I'm using that interior spacer to figure out how to best frame the map. And now begins a game of shuffling things around to see what works and looks best. Just like the Habana box, I'm using artifacts from memorable places and events. I'm trying the map of Cork's Heritage Pubs on both sides of the box. And that's where it goes, just like in the most recent layout. While choosing the items and their positioning, there are two main things I keep in mind. The information needs to be at least partially available to see, and it also needs to fit in harmoniously. It needs to look good. I know I've used the word artifact to describe these various items, but I think it's accurate. An artifact is an item of cultural or historical interest, and that fits my perception of these items. The tourist map of Kilkenny, what a beautiful historic town, and bars. I think we hit every bar on Parliament and then High Street till we came face to face with the megalithic, imposing, red-lit left bank bar. I don't know how many small and large rooms there were on those many, many floors. They had live bands, bars. It seriously felt like we'd been transported back to the Prohibition era and speakeasies. This is part of a travel brochure for Belfast Culture Night. The cover is really colorful, but all I need is the word Belfast, and there's the date too. That'll go really well right here. This little map was ripped right out of my Lonely Planet travel guide. I've used a red sharpie to trace our entire trip across Ireland. Yeah, that's where this goes. A bottle of something local, in this case, Jameson Irish whiskey. I'm not a huge whiskey drinker. Sure, I'll do shots till the cows come home, the sun rises, the chickens come to roost, but in that case, I don't know what I'm doing. So by that definition, I'm not a connoisseur. That's a little folder given to tourists to hold cards or passes. This particular holder has an ad for yellow umbrella walking tours. Highly recommended to become friends with the guide for a pub tour on Friday nights. And the other side has welcome in several languages, including falcha in Irish or Gaelic. You might have read over the doorway of every Irish bar and pub in the world, Cave me la falcha, because the Irish aren't just welcoming, they also tend to exaggerate a bit. Cave me la falcha, a hundred thousand welcomes. That's what it means. Once I'm settled on everything's final position, I'll start cutting the pieces to fit nice and tight inside the box. Everything that strays outside the black frame gets chopped off. On Valencia Island, just off Ireland's southwestern tip and the upper left corner of my box here, is Knightstown, where we stayed at the Spring Acre Inn. The owner was named Mary, but we had a very personal secret name for her, Mrs. Doubtfire. Unfortunately, the inn is closed now, uh, so we'll never have Mary's wonderful big Irish breakfasts again. Now this past booklet with the Cliffs of Moor ticket that's not working for me. Maybe this way? Yeah, maybe we're getting somewhere. So much fussing with small details, but it's all worth it in the end. And it's a lot of fun to do. It's time for some Irish inspiration. Though I've got a bottle of Jameson, I think I prefer other Irish whiskeys. I know all whiskeys are somewhat harsh in a way, right? But some are just a little bit less murderous in the way they go down, such as Bushmills. But Jameson is the juice of choice if you're doing shots in the pub here in Montreal. Still prefer Bushmills or Jameson's Stout Edition. There are so many great Irish whiskies to discover. I'm slowly on that voyage of discovery, but mine is a very slow ship. Like they say in Ireland, slancha, meaning to your health. I'm marking where I need to cut to fit the artifacts inside the box. Just short, very faint lines with an ultra-fine Sharpie. That story about me mixing up the Moroccan Casablanca with the Cuban Casablanca? Well, Ireland has its own fables of Bob's brainlessness. Because here in Montreal, our Irish pubs have delicious onion soup made with Guinness and served piping hot au gratin. 
So I'm on a two week trip going from pub to pub all over Ireland ordering this very same onion soup. Eventually, after days of not finding any, I ask how come this fine Irish pub doesn't have that staple of each and every pub I've ever encountered in my very limited Montreal experience. Well, simply I'm told, onion soup is French, not Irish. It just happens that Montreal, with its mix of so many cultures, makes some pretty astonishing culinary mashups. We still laugh about this, probably always will. If at all possible, use a metal ruler with a non-slip back so it doesn't slide around when you're applying pressure with your blade. And steel instead of plastic so your blade won't bite into the ruler as you're cutting. A thicker piece of paper will help keep the thin paper of the map in place. I'll use a little spurt of adhesive. I have 3M's Super 77, but also Top Bond Palette Adhesive, and it's weird, but it works just as well. It doesn't take much to hold the map in place. I'm done with the rest of this map of Dublin. Did I mention how much I love Dublin? Yeah, absolutely adore Dublin. Time to cut all the pieces and start assembling. This corner Belfast item is a bit bigger and I want to make absolutely certain that it will be square to fit in the corner perfectly. I'm using an acrylic set square very carefully so as not to nick the plastic with the blade. I've just slightly scored the political prisoner's tour receipt. I'll fold it for now. Knightstown is cut to fit right here in the upper left corner. The passbook with the ticket and part of the brochure for Cork's Pubs. I really thought I'd find my people there. Tons of Murphys, but nobody accosted me on the streets. No long lost relatives told me they were overjoyed to finally have my branch of the family return to reclaim some abandoned castle, saying, here, Mr. Murphy, are the keys. The closest I got was at a Murphy's ice cream shop in Kilkenny, where the owner told me I looked like the Murphys from Dingle. Since then, my girlfriend calls me a Dingle Murphy. I'm really enjoying my Ryobi glue gun. Just keep an extra battery on the charger and you'll be fine. I'm still not happy with the cliffs of Moor Pass. And then I realize the other side is much prettier. To give some dimension to the shadow box, I'll be propping everything up using small pieces of foam core. A couple of lengths of tape to hold the map onto the backboard for now. Interior frame goes back on. For final assembly, I'm using the inner frame and the outer frame to hold everything square. It just takes a few drops to hold your items down. Also, the glue coming out of this gun is unbelievably hot and takes a few moments to cool down. The glue, though hot, adheres really quickly to porous materials like foam core. I just need to hold it in place with the slightest pressure for a short time for it to set properly. Poking the sharp tip of my X-Acto knife works really well to hold and glue and position smaller pieces that are harder to reach with big hands like mine. And it's always nice to keep that hot glue off my fingertips. Sometimes it's necessary to double up on the foam core to thicken it. I really want these items to have different heights, so to speak, so that one item seems to float over another. The bottle requires something special we have to remove material instead of adding it. You'll see shortly. The ticket pass booklet, I think I've probably given it half a dozen names by now, goes right here, and a dab of hot glue to hold the cliffs pass in place with a foam core spacer so it doesn't start flapping around someday. Double thickness of foam core for Knightstown. And another trivia worthy piece of information. This is where the very first transatlantic cable station was built. The other end of the cable was in Hearts Content, Newfoundland. First message, which joined the two continents, 1858. I want to give the receipt a bit more height. Unfortunately, the foam core spacer stuck to the map before I have the time to position it correctly. I can work with that, but I'll have to cut that little portion sticking out of the right side of the paper before sealing up the box. The euro goes back in with a spacer underneath, and you'll notice that the glue cools significantly faster on cool coins than on paper and foam core. For the second coin, I'm using a small round spacer and sticking it over the first, slightly off center. Third coin, 
just leaning against the bottom one. I'm marking where the bottle will be positioned because I have to cut out the back of the shadow box. It just doesn't fit under the clear acrylic glass. I have to cut a slot where the bottle will push into an opening at the back panel. Release the tape and separate the map and items from the backing. I'm tracing the contour of the bottle. It doesn't matter if the opening will be bigger than required. The map will simply cover that up. Except for the slot, but you won't be able to see it since it's hidden by the bottle. I've got this nifty little... I said I've got this nifty little scroll saw which is perfect for this type... Which is just perfect for this type of work. The back panel goes back. And this time, I'm assembling all of this without glue or tape to hold the map. I think the inner frame will keep everything in place since it overlaps the map and all the other pieces butt up tight against it. For the sake of authenticity, filling the bottle halfway from another bottle of Jameson Irish Whiskey. One shot and a second. With all my whiskey and booze related stuff, you'd think I was a heavy drinker. Not at all. Maybe socially? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a previous build and video of my Wistinguisher, also known as the Fire Water Extinguisher, now hanging by the door of the workshop. Now I need to put this bottle in its final place. I'm using these small boxes to lift the back off my work surface. Perfect fit. A good dab of hot glue and back in it goes. Just hold the bottle in place for a moment while the glue cools. The acrylic goes on, and the exterior frame slips over everything. Flip it over and push down the tabs. This one's finished, and I love it. Maybe it's too late for me to start consulting about my need to fit everything in neat little boxes, but I really do enjoy these types of displays, and I don't necessarily make them just for trips. Anything memorable, such as these tool displays or this reminder of a weekend spent snapping ratchets and skinning knuckles while removing a single, corroded, inaccessible part under my car, or even these which I'll sometimes build whenever I have small bits of quarter-inch scrap plywood. I love making these. Some loose ends here. Possibly because of the humidity, or I don't know what exactly, the covering on the front corners of the Irish box had come and stuck a bit. I hit those corners with a bit of heat from this 300 watt heat gun, which melted whatever adhesive was holding it down and pressed it back onto the MDF frame. Perfect. I just protected the acrylic glass just in case. And a quick word about blades. Because I don't know what happens to these really sharp objects once they're trashed or recycled, I'll sometimes give them a quick scrape through this carbide sharpener. That prolongs the life of any blade even these Ulfa blades, instead of snapping off little shards of razor-sharp metal. And once these blades are beyond salvaging, I've made myself a small sharps container. I've been told I can drop this off at any pharmacy or drugstore and they'll be disposed of safely. So these are done and I'm really happy with these. I just need a few more shadow boxes for my next project. And as a project, isn't this the coolest thing? All you need are these shadow boxes, you need some glue, you need some exacto, some knives, uh, maybe some uh, foam core or paperboard, and uh, your beloved, wonderful, memorable junk. That's all you need. Thanks for watching. I see you've managed to put your junk in a box and expose it to the entire world. I'm impressed. Still not a booger.